first things first. It's for burning discipline. It's not Patrick Swayze, as you can see, and you see in the corner, Doctor Who. Now that's out of the way, we can move on to the video. Uh, I came up with a... This is going to be the start of a concept I came up with. <clears throat> um, I, th I, 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 a lot of uh, what New Japan's been doing lately is incredibly frustrating. For somebody who... For somebody who thinks that there are people on the New Japan roster that should be doing more than they are, they should be higher up the card than they are, that should be world champion, gutter, but are not, and that there are people that are being pushed to the moon and back, and then to the moon again, and then back, and then to the moon again, Nakamura and Tanahashi, over and over again, despite putting on maybe not necessarily up to par performances <clears throat> so I thought why not go back to the very first Wrestle Kingdom rebook Wrestle Kingdom 1 re rebook Wrestle Kingdom 2 rebook Wrestle Kingdom 3 rebook Wrestle Kingdom 4 and then rebook Wrestle Kingdom 5 um, so basically it's just rebooking all all of the Wrestle Kingdoms <clears throat> and yes, this video is going to be Wrestle Kingdom one. So uh, let's get on with the card, shall we? Uh, first match of the night: um, Masanobu Fuchi and Shuwama, who are obviously uh, you've got the young guy from Old Japan, Shuwama, who's a future heavyweight champion, as we know today, and he's team up, teaming up with the old, old, old man Fuchi against Ricky Choshu and Nafumi Yamamoto. Uh, for uh, for any of you who don't know, um, Yamamoto is uh, Yoshitatsu. Um, this this match is it, it, there's not really that much build to it. <clears throat> you've got <clears throat> sorry, um, you've got the two legends in Fuji and Joshu. You've got Suwama and Yamamoto, who are the two young guys. You've got a, a, a sort of a, a legend and an up and comer. Uh, and if you sort of have so one is going to get a rub from being teaming with Fuchi. Yamamoto is going to get a rub from teaming with Joshu. You just, I, I think that's a nice match to open the show. And um, since Yamamoto is obviously going to go off to uh, WWE in the near future, I'd have Suwama go over on him with the last ride. And I mean, Joshu and Fuchi, you just put them together and you just have them chop the shit out of each other. That would be that would be an intense battle between those two. So that would be my opener. Um, second match of the night, uh, Blood, Sweat and Tears, I named that Burning Discipline, go subscribe to him now if you're not, um, Josh came up with, um, Tai Okea and Jamal, that's Umaga, against uh, Toro Yano and Togi Makabe, the MVPs, the most violent players. Uh, Makabe is somebody that I want to build, he's going to be a big name in the future. Uh, Yano is, well, he's Yano. He's not. He's not. He's not at the level that Makabe is. But they were a team at this time, so um, why not? Why you'd have to sort? Of, I, I felt like you should build them together. So you have Yano and Makabe teaming up against Kaya, who was basically wasted in what was an awful main event against between him and Tanahashi uh, for the uh, the heavyweight title. And I'd bring in um, Umaga, Jamal. And uh, I know, I actually know that right now that he happened to be in WWE at the time, but that's it's, it's one small minor detail that I, I'm sure we, we probably couldn't get around, but ah, who cares, it's my rebooking. I'll do what the fuck I like. And it's not a big deal, I mean, it's only one person. It's probably, the, I think it's the only person I really do that with the whole the whole year. Um, so Yano, Yano and Makabe would go over with uh, Makabe getting the pin on Kaya with the uh, King Kong knee, knee drop. And uh, I think that would be a very solid sort of. It would be a very violent tag team match. It would just be the the. It would basically be a brawl. So the the, the blood, sweat, and tears is basically a. It'd be a basic hardcore match, hardcore tag team match. So 
and Maccabee would go over with, uh, at the end of the match. <coughs> Fourth ma uh, third match of the night, sorry. Gedo and this is this is where the card gets a little bit interesting. Gedo and Jado defend the tag team titles against Taka Michinoku and Dick Togo from uh Well, then obviously not from New Japan. Um they'd be representing all Japan in this in this instance. Um Jado, Gedo and Jado were uh, the, uh, the uh the IWGP tag team champions at the time and whether I liked them or not, they were the champions, so uh, kind of have to go go in with them as the champions. Um Taka and Togo were obviously a team at the time, and um, um, I was talking talking with uh, Burning Discipline over this, uh, Josh, and um, we actually put together the team of Dick Togo and Taka Michinoku, and then when we went back and checked, uh, they were actually the team that happened to win it off Gato and Jado down the road eventually anyway, so it was, I thought that was quite a... A sweet twist to it, and why? Why not? Why not? If they're going to win the titles, why not have it be at either uh, um, Wrestle Kingdom? Have it be a big deal. You've got um, all Japan coming to New Japan, winning the tag the the tag team titles at their biggest show of the year, and taking them back to New Japan. That would be huge. That would be absolutely huge. So I'd have Tucker over Jado, Mitch Nuki drive off. That's easy. Fourth match of the night is the IWGP Tag Team Championships. Um, Manabu Nakanishi and Takao Mori uh, against Giant Bernard and Travis Tomko. And Tomko puts in effort. <laughs> uh, Nakanishi and Mori were going in as champions. Bernard and Tomko were on the card, kind of wasted. You obviously want Bernard to go. To go somewhere in the near future. He's obviously going to be built big. And and I, I believe he was teaming with Tomko at the time. They were sort of a, a tag or they, they at least became a tag team. So why not put them together at Wrestle Kingdom, build them build them to a title shot and you just have Nakanishi and Umori retain here. You have Nakanishi goes over uh, Tomko because Tomko's well, you're not going to push Tomko. So. Have uh, Nakanishi go over Tomko with the Hercules car. Fifth match of the night uh, is a six man, and this is a stacked six man. Uh, you've got the All Japan Boys, you've got Kazayashi, you've got Shuji Kondo, and you've got Brother Yashi against Minoru, Koji Kanemoto, and Jushin Liger. This would be absolutely fantastic, it would be non stop action. Um, Hayashi and, 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 and Kondo obviously. Big big names. Um, I believe Kondo, Kondo and Yashi were teaming at the time, so you, it, it makes sense to put Yashi in there. And obviously Kondo was going to be Kondo was going to become a huge name down the line. Ayashi huge name already. Uh, Minoru was the IWGP junior, junior champion at the time, and Kanemoto and Liger are, are arguably well, they are. They're the two biggest junior heavyweights in New Japan history. So this match would be absolutely uh, absolutely phenomenal. Um, and I have Liger going over Yashi. And I think it makes sense to have Liger going over Yashi because um, having Yashi take the pin, uh, it makes more sense. Because if Kondo takes the pin, then I think I don't think it does anything for Kondo, and it just puts over the the New Japan guy that gets the pin. If um, the biggest if the biggest star New Japan junior heavyweight star of all time pins the the possibly probably the weakest guy in the match. Then I think that gives Yashi a rub as well. He gets pinned at the biggest show of the year by the biggest star, by the biggest star of all time. So, and to have Yashi, um, Yashi uh, get pinned off the uh, Brainbuster. This is where it gets really, really, really interesting. Um, we've got four, four, four fantastic. I'd say four main events here. Um, this is the first of them. Uh, Kensu Kensuke Sasaki and Toshiaki. Toshiaki Kawada going one on one. What a match that would be! I know Suzaki wasn't actually available, was actually on this card, but he wasn't really doing anything around this sort of time, so I think we could have gotten him. Um, and Kawada was facing uh, Nakamura, and I think that was a bit of a, a sort of a waste of Nakamura. So I thought, I thought we'd put this. This is really a dream match. They've only they've had two matches before. 
Sasaki went over once, and Kawada went over the the uh, the other time. So this is really, I think most people would look at this as a. This is it. This is to show what, who really is the biggest star. Um, I know a lot of people would want Kawada to go over, but I think Suzuki is the bigger name overall. I mean, he's um, along with um, Takayama is the only guy to have held the the IWGP and um, to have to have had the the uh, heavyweight titles, the all the heavyweight titles. That's what it's like. <clears throat> so I'd have Suzuki go over, and I'd make it, I'd make it in big fashion, make it be in big fashion. If it, if this is going to be the final match between these two, the the third of the the third of three, if you will, um, have Suzuki bring out the volcano eruption. Why not? Biggest show of the year, uh, end of uh, end of the end of the line for for, for both men really, because I, I I don't I'm I don't think either of them are uh, are appearing at future wrestling kingdoms, and. Uh, why not? Why not make it go, go out with a big bang, a, a big dream match on the very first Wrestle Kingdom? You have a really dramatic finish with the volcano eruption. Have a you have a back and forth between the two, exchanging near falls, false finish, false finish, false finish. Then you have him hit the volcano eruption, and he gets the win. So, Sasaki over Kawada. Tenkoji coming back together. That was a good idea. Having them against uh, Muto and Chono was not. They, you, you've got old man, old man Chono and old man Muto. Who are, I mean, I know M Muto's probably slightly better, in, slightly better in the ring at this time than than Nakamura, uh, than Chono even. So, I think, I think. Uh, you throw Chono in the tag team match and uh, par partner him up with Nakamura against Tenkoji, and I think this is a this is a big deal because you've got the big name in Chono, you've got the up and coming star in uh, Nakamura, and you've got Tenkoji, who are who are a huge huge team. So obviously Kojima's going to go off to all Japan after this, and Tenzan's going to Tenzan's going to be staying around. So. And the reason, and before anybody questions uh, the Nakamura Chono team, they were they actually won the G1 Tag Tag League in 2006. So I think having them as a tag team here would uh, it would make sense. Definitely make sense. You got Nakamura, like I said, Nakamura. Um, I think I'd have Tenzan go over Nakamura because I think Tenkoji need the win. Would would I think it's better better used on on um, Tenkoji than it is on because Chono Ch Chono doesn't need the win because he's he's not really. He's not really being used in the future, so have Tenzan go over Nakamura with the TTD. That devastating finisher, and I think it gives Nakamura a rub to be in that sort of match in the first place, and even to take to take the fall. I think Nakamura would still look, still look great in this match because he would carry the match for his team. Chono even Chono couldn't really go at this sort of time, so you know, even well Chono still can't go. So I think that would be a great take of the match. Um, Semi main event. Uh, is your, it's basically basically just have the match they they had. All Japan Triple Crown. Minoru Suzuki defends against Yuji Nagata, and I, I wouldn't I really wouldn't change much about that match at all. Uh, I yeah, semi main event is probably the only thing I change. Move it up one, and move the so sort of so I've had the the shifting of the main events not really. Not really done uh, too much with uh, those those three main events. I'd just swapping a few few names around. <coughs> so uh, yeah, Suzuki retains. Just the way it happened. In the main event, the OWGP Heavyweight Championship, Hiroshi Tanahashi defends against Keiji Muto. Student versus teacher. This is kind of this. I mean. The first Wrestle Kingdom, it's got the dream match with Suzuki and Kawada. It's got Chono and Nakamura, the 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 old guy, the new guy. You, you've got the dream team reunion with Tenkoji. You've got a solid, you've got a very very solid All Japan um, Triple Crown title match. Um, the main event needs to be a huge deal. It's Tanahashi taking the torch from Muto, and it's as simple as that. Ko Ko vs Tanahashi was horrible. It went. Chono would have a have an awful match with Muto, and Muto 
Muto trains on Hoshi. So having have this really would be that the 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 moment to sort of cap off what would have been a, a very great show. You have Tanahashi get the pin over Muto, and it, he would not be bringing out the high fly fly for a while yet. And he would be get he would be get, but he would he would get the win over Muto with the the bridging dragon. So uh, huge huge victory for uh, Tanahashi. Uh, a huge huge show. Let me know what you think. Um, do rate, comment, subscribe, and uh, peace.